watching Victory Outdoors, proudly presented by Mossy Oak. Every year I go to South Dakota to go hunting in uh, either in October or November, and this year was no different. I got to go up in uh, July though, this year on a family vacation, and I just happened to take some trail cameras with me and so a video camera to do a little video and, and try to get some trail cam footage and actually got to take a hay bale blind out there and set it up. So this year we, it was really neat because I had the farmer rancher send me memory cards back and I sent him new memory cards and they switched them out for me and I got to see everything that was on the cameras before we even went. So it had added a big level of excitement for us just being able to know what was already kind of out there. It got us really excited, got us shooting more. Um, actually made us buy our permits right then and there the day the camp memory cards came back which we usually hold off till about three weeks before but we got our permits right away and got ready to go back out and go hunting and we get about eight days of hunt before the rifle season starts so you really have a crunch i mean you got a short time you got to hang sets uh get your tree stands up check trail cameras again while you're out there um, do a little pre-scouting before you even set your stands based on your trail cam footage. So this year was no different. We got some really good bucks on camera. Um, so we went right to work setting up uh, tree stands. And the, every year we try to work out with a neighboring landowner and see if we can get permission there. And then last year uh, they gave us permission. And then this year, once again, they gave me permission. Um, but it was like the third day in. So we were running a little bit behind on getting onto their property. The first few nights we were there, we were hunting out of tree stands um, where we'd gotten some pictures of some really mature white-tailed deer. One giant white-tail and uh, another really big five by five. Even had some pictures of some elk. But uh, it, was being, it was a little bit tough hunting. We didn't get permission to go on the land next to us until a couple nights later. But once we got in there, I had some really good encounters with some, some big white-tail. Um, one that he came in with a doe and he stopped at 90 yards and turned and went up the hill, which was disappointing. I was hoping he was gonna come on in. And then I got to see a, a buck that had, one antler was normal and the other one curled around and the tip of his antler touched the tip of his nose. It was really different looking. But those were the type of encounters we were having. It was, wasn't the mature buck that I wanted to take yet, knowing what was there. Uh, I did have several smaller bucks that I, I could have taken. Um, but I, I just chose to hold off. I, I wanted a, a big mature deer. We had taken a hay bale blind and setting it up in the alfalfa field. First night I got in there, I seen a nice white tail. Um, we had been seeing some big mule deer, just we were given a, a little bit of time to get used to this hay bale blind. About the third of the last night, I got in the hay bale blind and uh, we weren't seeing too much. We had some does go over the hill as we came into it and then uh, right about an hour before dark, they all came back over along with one nice buck that I really would have taken if he got close enough, but he, unfortunately he didn't. And I was just getting to thinking it's, gosh, we only got about half hour, 45 minutes of time left and then uh, I looked to my left and here come in a, a pretty good group of mule deer. I had a decoy in the field with me, trying, hoping that one of the big white tail I seen the day before would come into the field, but when the mule deer started to come in, they didn't like that decoy at all. Uh, they would make motions towards it like, you know, you see white tails do, and trying to get it, you know, see if it would move, and they didn't like it at all, so they were really hesitant on jumping over into where I wanted them. But once a couple of them jumped, a doe and then a, a younger buck, uh, the mature buck stayed in the background. Actually, some of them peeled off and went around behind me. So I thought, oh, it, this isn't good. They're you know, all going to peel off and go around behind me, and they're about 150 yards behind me. But 
but end up one of them come within about 40 yards and uh, I thought well light lights fading fast here's my chance So I drew back, um, shot, and was very disappointed with my shot. I shot right over his back. I, I could watch the Illuminoc uh, go right over his back. It was, it was really disheartening. Um, I watched the deer run off, making sure that I, I, it was a clean miss, reviewed the footage, and it was a clean miss. It went right over, sailed right over his back at 40 yards. And it was very hard for me because I, I practiced religiously for probably the first two months before I go out there all the way out to 60 and I felt like 40 yards was, was nothing of a shot for me. But the deer didn't duck, he didn't jump the string, anything like that, it was just, I, I made a mistake. I, I, I beat myself up all the time trying to figure out where I made the mistake. But I didn't practice sitting down, shooting from a sitting position, so this year that's, going into this next season, that's something I'm gonna try, is a lot of sitting down and shooting from a chair because I, I really think that hay bell blind's gonna be right back where it was and hopefully them deer come back. It was a disappointment, but it was exciting to see that many big deer that I did see.